More than one third of LA Metro's bus and train operators are women, but that wasn't always the case. Transit was originally seen as an exclusively male industry, and it took 100 years and two world wars for that to change. Come one, come all, and take a ride with the Moto Manettes. The United States was involved in World War I from 1917 to 1918. Enough men were sent overseas that large numbers of women were recruited in many industries, including transit, to fill vacancies. The first reported instance of a woman working on Los Angeles streetcars occurred in May of 1918. The experiment of a female conductor was short-lived. Privately run electric railway companies across the country adopted only as a last resort, or emergency only, policies when it came to hiring women. The Amalgamated Association of Street and Electric Railway Employees of America even openly stated that it wasn't time yet and streetcars were no place for women. These initial employment experiments were short-lived. It took until World War II for the door that opened just a crack in 1918 to finally open wide. Beginning in September 1942, the privately owned and operated Los Angeles Railway began hiring women as streetcar and bus operators on a trial basis. The test turned out to be so successful that the LA Railway soon hired over 300 women as motormanettes, conductorettes, coachettes, and driverettes. The employment requirements, age 21 to 40, weight 120 to 140 pounds, and height 5'3 to 5'10. And there were certainly challenges, among them not enough female restrooms. One of the earliest tasks was operating the Opportunity Coach, a bus sent around LA city streets in an effort to recruit and interview new additions to the LA Railway team. Several new female hires also had husbands in the war effort and saw transit service as a way to support their families on the home front. Women were trained and evaluated exactly the same as the men they replaced. C.E. Morgan, manager of Los Angeles Railway Operations in 1942, was quoted as saying, We've been really amazed to see how well most women work into the mechanical phases of the job. Some of them actually master the streetcar controls faster than do men. Female operators, in an attempt to boost wartime morale, were even interviewed on Hollywood-based radio programs with Bing Crosby, Frank Sinatra, and other radio entertainers. Performing what had been traditionally men's jobs was a novelty. Many saw working women as a necessary part of World War II life. Even still, the temporary nature of transit opportunities for women loomed large. Women who joined as motor manettes were given contracts to sign, acknowledging that they were only temporary replacements for their male counterparts and would leave their jobs once the war ended. After World War II ended in 1945, women in many industries tried to keep their jobs but were squeezed out by men returning from abroad. It took nearly three decades before a female bus operator would be considered for a full-time position. Lelia Bailey was hired as the first full-time female RTD bus operator in 1971. The public reception to her full-time employment was much different from that of the wartime Mortimer Manettes. As she said in a public interview, I was like someone from out of space to everyone that I met. A lot of women wouldn't get on. Taking a, a job away from a man, well, you just don't answer. I can remember there was a Hispanic lady, she was at that stop every day. And I'd pull up and she said, no, no lady. Despite these cultural shifts, Bailey continued her employment with RTD and soon rose the ranks, encouraging other women to apply for transit-oriented careers. Now LA Metro employs over 1,600 female bus and train operators. As was the case around the nation, it took several decades for women to find employment in traditionally male-dominated industries. Thanks to the tenacity and resilience of Leela Bailey and her predecessors, transit enjoys a diverse range of female employment today.